Thank you, Francis Ogbe. That's some deep research there. The issues that can affect our ports and by association affect Nigerians, especially those who are doing vibrant, legitimate business and want our economy to grow and people to prosper. So let's focus on the challenges of cargo movement within our country. Coming in, going out, and it's an excellent time to have a chat with the Minister for Transportation. He is here with us. Right Honourable Chibuike Rotimi Amechi. Hello, sir. Good morning. Great to have you on our show today. My pleasure. Fantastic. When we're listening to uh, some of that feature, there was talk about uh, Mask Line birthing at One Port last year. They said the biggest vessel to come into, to birth at any port in Nigeria. Wow. Have we had more of that happening? And if we well, yes, should we be celebrating that one big vessel birth in our port? It shows how much we lack infrastructure. Uh, the problem with the Nigerian, and I, I, I have had this argument with uh, Fashola, when I trip back at the uh, uh, maritime personnel, they confirm what I said, that we don't have seaports yet in Nigeria, what we have uh, river ports. The tea of the the tea of the sea. All all our ports tea of the sea. Until you have a port that is right there at the sea, then the death, the draft, will become critical. Now you can't birth uh, an a sixteen meter vessel in an eleven meter seaport. How to go to run aground? So. I think the, what must have happened in the neck, because the neck actually is, is slightly up between 11 and 12 meters. So the neck can take that. Maybe the vessel that came was, must be about 11 or, or 12 draft. Now, what, Niger, what the Nigerian government is doing is the Nigerian government is constructing some new, what you can refer to as seaports. Then they can take bigger vessels, and bigger vessels will then come to Nigeria because they will need to uh, discharge more cargoes. So what there are a lot of issue, uh, factors that determine what kind of vessels that come. The, the biggest factor that determines so that a big vessel will come to your, will call to your port or not is the draft of your port. I've said here, if your draft is 10, 11 meters, you don't expect a 16 meter uh, uh, vessel to come into your, into your port. Now, I'm sure that by the time we complete Lekki, we're completing Lekki next year, next year, 2022, uh, commercial activities in Lekki should start by next year, middle between June and October. By the time we complete that, we won't be celebrating the, oh, arri the arrival of a big vessel because the vessels that we call there will be big vessels, vessels of, of about 16 meters. Then Nigeria shouldn't be celebrating, oh, we received 16 meters because it's a common feature all it's over the world. It's become a norm. No. If we commence the construction of Bonnet Deep Sea Port, you will have vessels of 16, 17 meters that will birth there because the draft for that Bonnet seaport will be about 16 to 17 meters. With the same thing in Wari, we are looking for we are looking for where to construct the port in Wari. We are having big challenge in that. But there's one already existing there. Uh, what is the draft? I doubt if it's you know, if it's even you know, up to 10 meter draft. And the sea it's regularly you have to distill regularly. They are more expensive to maintain. Our ports are more expensive to maintain. So you have. Uh, a contracting firm that has to consistently be doing dredging. And Nigerians are beginning to wonder why we should be doing that. I, I looked at, uh, and that's why I told MPA that they can't proceed. I looked at how much it costs us for, to do dredging. Uh, when I saw the contract that uh, uh, MPA was about to award before I stopped them, one is 43 billion naira every year for 15 years. One is 23 billion naira every year for, for 15 years. Uh, which other one? That is, what, the third one is about thirty something billion dollars. Is that what we're going to be spending every it's year? Not cost effective. Exactly. And you see, that's why I say we public officers must love Nigeria. We public officers must love Nigeria. We must do even if MPA comes forward to say, look, we are not yet ready because we couldn't buy it. They must put it in their budget next year, mm. so that by by the time we buy the equipment ourselves and begin to dredge. Then we'll lose the cost. That's that's the, the main reason why I, I disagree with the management of MPA and say, listen, we can't be paying this kind of money every year for just to years. maintain and manage. Not even maintain, just the draft. That's the that's the just the dredging. Finish to allow vessels go in and come out. And imagine forty-three billion naira a year. So in the year, 
uh, in the budget, the MPA budget, whatever it is, they are spending 43, 23, 32. So by nearly 100 billion naira. Just to judge. Exactly. It wasn't like that previously. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, that is not cost effective. So of course you are looking at ways where that money can be properly utilized. Exactly. In our so, best interest. So even if MPA says, well, like that's the case they are making, oh, they don't have it in their budget, so they can't buy new equipment, then maybe maybe you need to award a short-term contract, not 15 years, maybe three years, two years, in within which they will have bought, they will have placed order for, press put the items in their budget, place order for the uh, equipment, and begin to learn to, to dress. Don't tell me you can't, uh, we, can, we don't have the capacity. They don't exist. If you don't have the capacity, don't continue. Okay. The management can continue if you don't have the capacity. So that's that's what you that's what you're saying. What you're, what what we should be going for? Uh, actual sea ports that are seated in the sea, so that you can have big vessels call on your ports. And Nigeria can benefit. At the end of the day, it's our economy that grows, and we benefit from it. Let's talk about the Nigeria Shippers Council. What is their role in all of this? Meanwhile, our viewers, you can communicate with us. We want to hear from you. We want to know what your thoughts are. What's happening at your end? Are you in any of those areas where seaports are located? Do you have first-hand experience about the travels of clearing goods at these ports? Let's talk about it. Well, I will answer. Let me respond to you on the issue of uh, Shippers Council. Council. But let me first take on the issue of clearing. Clearing goods don't fall within the reason of, of um, Ministry of Transport. That is fully the responsibility of Ministry of Finance because that's where you have customs. Uh, our job is to provide the necessary infrastructure. Even now, customs have taken over the issue of the provision of infrastructure. So we are left with the management of the seaports. I don't think, well, I must say I can't answer the question, but I don't think it would be fair to uh, make me address questions that are left for Ministry of Finance to address. But uh, on the issue of Shippers Council, Shippers Council appear to be uh, and the agency that has the responsibility to relate with shippers, uh, uh, owners of ships and those who ship. And they act also as the economic regulators of the seaports. Even though they be having this disagreement with MPA, which is unnecessary too, they shouldn't have that disagreement. Because if they are not there as regulators, who then will regulate MPA? And MPA in the current management is struggling not to allow them to do their perform their, perform their responsibility. So um, the, the Shippers Council, if allowed to function properly, then become the economic regulators set, deciding on what is kind of tariff that you can uh, fix at the port and managing it in a way that it doesn't affect the economy, neither does it affect those who ship. Because at the end of the day, if the cost of, like I listened to the gentleman, if the cost of doing business is high in Nigeria, the cost of buying those business by the end users will also be high. Definitely. And then poverty will continue to creep in. We are all feeling the impact. I mean, it goes without saying. Already we see that goods and services. I'm sure that is for what you're wearing is not important. Except the shoes and the belt they're wearing. The uh, shoes were made in our bar. My uh, colleague Elizabeth brings them for us. Uh, I'm not sure I'm saying the truth. <laughs> well, well, but uh, again, it's to encourage people <laughs> to buy more of Nigeria. But made in Nigeria uh, goods uh, and, 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 and products. That's a good one. Um, no, you say that um, uh, some things are not your, in your purview that would the Ministry of Finance. But let's look at the fact that some say because of the travel <laughs> of clearing goods at our ports, people now go I to other ports I, I, in yes, that's correct. But I don't the think, African continent. Yes, that's correct. People go in Like uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Like, they, uh, they don't get to Côte d'Ivoire. Okay. <laughs> they go to Benari, Where do they go to? Benin Republic. Uh, Benin Republic. Maybe, okay. maybe Ghana. Maybe, maybe Ghana. Maybe Lome. Maybe Lome. Okay. Yeah. But... Um, uh, I don't think that clearing is a problem. Transportation is also an issue. How do these people move their goods out of the seaport? The next issue is about roads. The roads are bad. Infrastructure. Yeah, exactly. So once, even if the customs hasten the process, and then you get cleared, your goods get cleared in two days. It takes quite a long time to move those goods out of the cargoes out of the seaport. So it's, 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 it's a combination of factors. And what we need to do is to work together to ensure that we reduce the, these factors to ensure that goods are able to leave 
We are watching Wake and Dill. Just a few minutes ago, you said the combination of factors can bring about a few challenges at our ports. And one of them, road, infrastructure, development. Let's talk about cargo transportation. How does infrastructure in terms of roads affect positively or negatively? Well, let's see this. At Papa and Tin Can Ports in Lagos, were built to accommodate 1,500 trucks daily, but now have to deal with influx of trucks, more than their estimated combined capacity. This haulage traffic out of Lagos, together with that of other ports in rivers, cross river and delta states, combined with trucks from several warehouses and factories, add heavy movements of goods across Nigerian roads daily, and in the process, affects the integrity of the roads. The heavy traffic of mostly overloaded trucks has caused a lot of damage on Nigerian highways, some of which the federal government has spent several billions of naira to fix, like Apapa Oshodi Expressway and Ilorin Jeba Highway. Several highways damaged by high traffic of overloaded trucks are still in disrepair across the country. These are our roads sections have at least the lifespan. 15, 20, 25 years, that are about. So, and you know, maintenance actually is supposed to be on what is reasonably good. But most of our road corridors have gone bad in such a way that you now invest so much in order to bring them back, in order to rehabilitate them, in order to reinstate them. So actually, that is the reason. The second one is also the loading. You can see that... Uh, of course, look at this traffic on this particular Abuja Kefi road. Look at what we are seeing here. The loading is, is quite much. You also talk of Zuba, uh, Abaji road. You can see the loading, the number of trucks. To effectively ease the pressure on the roads and reduce the cost and rate of highway reconstruction and maintenance, analysts in the transport sector are of the view that the government should open up Onisha and Barrow River ports and also encourage the constant usage of other seaports to reduce traffic on highways. See the continuation of railway modernization projects to move heavy materials on rails instead of roads. Speed up the inland dry port projects to service clearing yards for cargoes moved to inland states by rail. Construction of more petroleum pipelines to move petroleum products instead of via road. The government must ensure that at the ports and loading bays across the country fully calibrated to eliminate overloading of trucks. These interventions will translate to longer lifespan of roads and reduce cost of road maintenance and reconstruction. And safe, smooth and secure road networks. Um, thanks, Kachi. Um, your detailed uh, uh, voice over there. Okay, Mr. Bayer did that. Okay. We thank you for that package. It was detailed, and it just corroborates what um, the Honorable Minister is saying here. Uh, Honorable Minister, you're talking about um, how roads, a collection of issues, can bring about several challenges, and we just looked at uh, road infrastructure and how it can limit growth and development in terms of moving cargo from place to place. But let's go back inside the ports again. What about digitization of the process, bringing about modern technology? It's being utilized everywhere. Yeah, but well, the federal just approved that about last year. Is it last year or year before last? And the process has not been completed. So uh, they have to buy the equipment and all that to ensure that at the end of the day, you don't do manual clearance. So all this argument about oh, the clearance is delaying the release of cargoes will be eliminated latest next year. And Customs is doing that. They are buying the necessary uh, infrastructure that you need to achieve that. Uh, on our side, we're, we're doing a similar, a similar thing. But you see, my, my problem with uh, Papa Seaport is that it's still not beyond digitalization. It's still not up to standard. There are a lot of things we need to do just beyond digital equipment. So I'm going to take a review of that. This weekend, like I said, I'm going to take a review of that. I'm going to ask the terminal uh, operators to appoint people to do a proper study of the proper support and advise government. And then um, 
also get everybody to invest. Because currently, they just got the seaport and they're making money. I'm not sure they are putting any investment in the seaport. That's what I'm going to face on Friday. If we, if we don't get them contributing, then we don't renew. Mm. We don't renew their uh, decent, uh, franchise or whatever they have gotten from government. I would not renew. And I will get that approval from the president before I make that statement to them when I when I meet them. That maybe that's uh, beyond the digitalization of the process for clearing. We need to digitalize almost all aspects of the seaport. You need to go to uh, the seaport in Singapore. You will love it. You will, you will see no human beings between you and technology. When you get to the gate of the seaport, nobody talks to you. Once it is in the, in the uh, technology process that you're supposed to get into the seaport, the gates will open for you and you go in. You go to where your cargo is, you pack your vehicle, and the cargo will be dropped on your vehicle. And you, you, but you can't spend up to 10 minutes at the, at the seaport. You can't. Going by the way, you're very impressed with what you have seen abroad. How long are you looking at bringing that to bear it's not, it's in, not an easy, in Nigeria? It's not, it's not an easy thing. What you should ask is, uh, to what extent is the seaport in Lekki going to be like that? Because we must not make kind of mistakes we made. Well, you won't call it mistake in uh, Papa, because at the time Papa was built, there were no that kind of technology to inform their installations in Papa seaport. But see, as, as, te as technology developed, we should have started installing and not remain as manual as we are now. Uh, so uh, we need to move with the times. Yes, so we need to we need to meet with the, the uh, concessionaire in uh, in the Lekki Deep Seaport and find out how they are moving with the technology. That same will happen as they start construction, the construction of Bonny Seaport and uh, the other seaport that want want to build. So that's what will happen. You just um, no doubt you have a, a roadmap, you have an agenda or a plan to make uh, the ports work. I, I was reading somewhere that um, you said it um, doesn't make sense to build more seaports, that we should focus on the dry ports. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit... Uh, uh, you are not quoted um, accurately? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. What I said is, currently, we don't, we don't, have, we don't have seaports. So we can't say don't build seaports. We need to build some more seaports. I agree with the uh, Kwai Bonsai government that their seaports should come on stream, the Bonny seaports should come on stream, the Lucky Deep seaports should come on If these three seaports come on stream, the cargoes we have, we don't even produce, what do we produce to begin to bother, bother about ports to export or import? We are consuming nations, so most times we, we import things. We should be discouraging people from importation and ask them to, mm. to produce things, those things that we require in the country. But uh, what I then said, is states that want to construct seaports. They've left, most of them have left uh, airports. It was a crazy thing. Everybody wanted to build an airport. Meanwhile, if you checked where the, uh, an airport is, most of those states are not more than 200 meters away I mean, uh, from, from the airport. And they want to build their own airport where actually they can use the next airport. Now, there's a decrease among the coastal states in trying to build seaports everywhere. And I don't think we need those seaports. Because the other seaports have not been... Seaports or dry ports? Seaports first. Okay. There are people, there are states that are... Interested in getting dry ports. Seaports. Mm. No, I've not seen any states. Okay, apart from, book, apart from Mugun, that I've asked for dry port, I've not seen any states confront me about uh, dry port. Okay. It's the seaport I'm seeing. And I'm saying, look, apart from the fact it's expensive, I just think that should, we should not waste our money going to... That should not be the focus. Yes, which they should look, look at education, they should look at security, they should look at edu um, health, uh, uh, all those infrastructures are essential to the growth of our economy and to the growth of the Nigerian, the well-being of Nigerians. So if you ask me to advise my friends who are governors, that's what I would tell them to focus on. And therefore, when I say we don't need to build more people, I'm not talking about them. The state, the state as, when I mean state now, as the Nigerian state needs to complete the Lekki Deep Seaport, we need to complete the Bonnet Deep Seaport, and we, I think we need to complete uh, the Warren Seaport, and possibly the Ebon Deep Seaport. You said earlier that um, what Lagos has is also the equivalent of what happens in, um, um, in Calabar. Exactly. Yeah, um, in, Port Arcot, in Port Harcourt, on there, and you know, the other one, in Delta as well. Why is the focus in Lagos? Yeah. First, there's insecurity. Um, to the, most vessels, who go to most vessels that berth or that call on the, sea, the ports in those areas charge uh, war premium. 
So it's more expensive to import through Nigeria because we are charged war premium. War premium simply means that Nigeria is at war. So anybody who is coming here will have to get an insurance as if it's going to a war zone. And that's quite expensive. It, it, it dovetails into the cost of goods in Nigeria. So uh, what we're trying to do to get us, uh, to get us out of the war premium zone is uh, the launching, which we're going to do on the 10th, and the president will do the launching of the security architecture. So we have, we have three aircrafts, we have no, three helicopters, we have two aircrafts, we have vessels, we have I mean, uh, boats and ships and uh, uh, drones, all sorts of things we are going to deploy to the water to protect it from uh, these marauders who go to attack vessels. We are currently number one in the world in terms of insecurity and piracy in the maritime sector. So people are not too keen to coming to Nigeria. Um, but we have what it takes to protect this area. I just say we bought all of them and the president will launch it on, uh, on the 10th. On the 10th. Then we will allow the military to take over. So the Navy will lead, the Air Force will fly the planes, and then the, the Nigerian Army will take over the, the APCs. The APCs, mm. and then we we'll move on from there. You talked about the lucky, the lucky port that is coming. What are your expectations for what the impact it will have on Nigeria when it comes full strength improve, next year? It will improve shipping. It will bigger cargo, bigger vessels will come into Nigeria. So the current vessels that carry limited number of cargoes will, will it will not be eliminated, but it will be reduced because the cargoes that will come will carry twice what those other uh, vessels come with and that will improve cost of doing business in nigeria there's no deliberate attempt to prevent the other seaports from functioning at no, optimal no, no, no. capacity no, 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 no. but people are asking how can we now channel goods services clearing businesses to other parts of nigeria if there's no deliberate attempt to stop them from doing their business and who's going to instruct the, them to the, go that the, way the, the, the problem is the government cannot compel an importer to use any seaport. It's his choice. To focus on Lagos. Any, anywhere, anywhere he wants to, if he wants Port Harcourt. But so the assumption of government is that the reason why they're not using Port Harcourt or Wari or Calabar is just beyond the issue of uh, dredging, because we can also dredge as we dredge in Lagos. And they actually dredge Port Harcourt. So uh, but our assumption is that the reason why they, have, they find it difficult to go to those areas, which actually is close to close to their business, where they do business, is because of the insecurity. So if we, um, and I also think that shippers dread going to those areas. So if we focus on these equipments we bought and ensure that security in the water, and people will people begin to, to go there. there. And uh, by the time we do that, and the IMO recognizes that now there is security in our water. Will be maybe taken out of the uh, war premium zone, and then the cost of shipping will reduce. But for now, it's high. Okay, the well, message is coming in. Uh, uh, higher, higher than Ghana, higher than Togo. It is our hope. It is our hope, especially as we are moving quickly to activate all of these plans and make them actualities. Messages are coming in. Messages are coming in. Um, someone is saying that uh, the network of roads. Uh, the poor network of roads has greatly impacted neg negatively on uh, our, uh, our ports and that we need to work in that regard very quickly. My, my, my friend uh, Babatunde Fashola is doing quite a lot in that regard. But you see, what Nigerians must recognize, and that's why I've stopped going to the press and arguing with people on issues, is that despite the paucity of funds, we're doing quite a lot in, all, in almost all fields. Okay, so by the time we came, he couldn't, he, there's no way they could have said we broke down the roads, but the roads were already broken down. But uh, Fashola and his ministry are doing quite a lot to fix those roads, and they're working. Mm. I'm sure it will improve. We are doing quite a lot with railway. We are going to launch railway on the 10th, the, the Lagos Ibadan Railway. That will decongest the seaport a lot, as we're going to carry goods on, on the track. We have bought a lot of wagons. We can, we'll carry both wet and dry cargoes. But at least the problem is that we will end at Ibadan. That's why we are working hard at Ibadan to ensure that we have well, warehouses to keep those cargoes when they get to Ibadan. Mm. By the time we get the loan we are looking for, we will then continue construction from Ibadan to Kano. Mm. Just like we are continuing with, between now and the end of July, commencing construction of the Potakot, uh, C, uh, Potakot uh, rail line to 
to to Meduguri, passing through the southeast and the and the north central northeast up to Meduguri. Uh, well, once we do all that, once we do all that, you will see the difference. Okay, um, Nigerians, listen and learn. There's good works coming up. Okay. Exercise a bit of patience. Let's go to Channel 10 now, where they're talking about the clearing of goods. The ports in Nigeria play a crucial role.